Welcome to Fertile Minds. My name is Dr. Kath Whitten and I'm a fertility specialist at IVF Australia. Today I want to take a look into PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is a common syndrome that affects around 10% of women in their reproductive years. However, most women that have it don't actually realise until they start to embark on that journey of trying to conceive. Let's take a look at PCOS and ovulation induction, which is a common treatment. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is a prevalent disorder that can affect many parts of a woman's body. It can have implications both short-term and long-term. It can affect your reproduction, your hormone, your cardiovascular, your dermatological, your metabolic, and your psychological state. PCOS has a range of signs and symptoms which are involved in the diagnosis. There is a certain set of criteria which need to be met for that diagnosis. Women need to have two of the three diagnostic criteria to be diagnosed with PCOS. The first one is oligo or amenorrhea, which is essentially just uh, irregular menstrual cycles. An irregular menstrual cycle is defined as one which is less than 21 days or more than 35 days. Or if a woman has not had uh, more than eight menstrual cycles in a 12 month period, she's considered to have irregular menstrual cycles. The second diagnostic criteria is something called hyperandrogenism. This relates to elevated androgens in the female's body. So we will either see these on blood test results or she may have symptoms of hyperandrogenism such as acne or excess hair growth. The third diagnostic criteria is polycystic ovaries on ultrasound. They're not actually cysts on her ovaries, but they're follicles. And a follicle is a small sac of fluid. It appears black on an ultrasound. And within each follicle is an egg. So that woman with polycystic ovaries on ultrasound has multiple follicles on her ovaries. To be diagnosed as multifollicular or polycystic, she needs to have 20 or more follicles on each ovary. Now we only would diagnose this in, in an adult because we do know that adolescents or females who are within eight years of having had their first menstrual cycle commonly have polycystic appearing ovaries. So to avoid overdiagnosis in this population, we only say that a woman has polycystic ovaries on ultrasound in the adult population. Now the exact cause of PCOS is actually largely unknown. We know that there are certainly some genetic factors, so women will often have a family history of PCOS. There's also a really complex interplay amongst her pituitary hormones, so follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, her ovarian and adrenal hormones, so her uh, estrogen, progesterone, and her androgens, as well as glucose and her her body's ability to process that glucose and insulin. Although we don't fully understand the cause of PCOS, there is constantly being research done in the field and we're learning more and more about it every day. Evidence tells us that women with PCOS take longer to fall pregnant, but in fact have the same rates of pregnancy as women without PCOS. The reason why PCOS causes fertility concerns is often because of the irregular menstrual cycle. In a regular menstrual cycle or a textbook cycle, which is 28 days, we know that that woman will ovulate around day 14 of her cycle. So it's quite easy for that couple to time intercourse around her fertile period. If a woman with PCOS has very regular cycles, it's very hard for that couple to time intercourse around her fertile period, so conception is a lot harder. In addition, women with PCOS have more adverse pregnancy outcomes. So for instance, they tend to have a higher rate of miscarriage and a higher rate of developing other conditions in pregnancy, such as gestational diabetes and high blood pressure. The increased risk of miscarriage may be due to other factors around the PCOS, however, including increase in maternal weight gain and things like diabetes and hypertension. 
Although PCOS is something that we don't fully understand the cause for, and it's a condition that we can't cure, it is something that we can manage, and we can manage quite well. In terms of falling pregnant, there are a few options that we can employ to help a couple fall pregnant. Ovulation induction is one of the most common options and quite successful. Things that you may have heard of include tablet medication, such as letrozole and clomid. We can also introduce metformin, uh, or she can take follicle stimulating hormone injections to help her ovulate. If we can help a woman ovulate, then the couple can have timed intercourse, or we can use intrauterine insemination to help achieve the pregnancy. Other things like IUI, or IVF down the track may be suggested or advised to a couple if there are other factors at play. For instance, male factors or problems with the sperm. In general, it's advised that a couple seek help. If a woman is under the age of 35 and she's been trying for pregnancy for at least 12 months, or if she's over 35, she should seek help earlier. So after around six months, Thanks for watching. For more information and for all things fertility, feel free to subscribe.